Hi everyone, Harry here to talk about the special grand jury in Fulton County, not Manhattan, and not the regular grand jury that will imminently, but we're not sure when, be returning charges, and I think a lot of them, uh, down in Fulton County. But these are the colleagues of the four person, Emily Coors, who went on a kind of uh, odd 15 minute PR tour uh, a few weeks ago. And in fact, I think that's what has triggered this really interesting sit down that about a six or so did with the Atlanta Journal Constitution, the local paper in town. They felt that um, her, uh, I, I think there may be a little tension with her. Uh, the story was told that she volunteered to be four person and nobody, you know, um, else volunteered. But I think they felt that her um, series of interviews put them in maybe a frivolous or flippant uh, light. And so they wanted to uh, to meet and kind of push back on that narrative. And that is the sort of first point of it. So it's a very interesting, somewhat in-depth interview where six of them were all together talking with the Atlanta Journal Constitution. And um, that, you know, in and of itself, including the details of the interview, really reveals a cohesive and yes, indeed, a very sort of thorough and sober grand jury. All of these details, by the way, that are coming forward spell B-A-D for, for Trump. It's the, If you're hearing about the kind of grand jury they were and wondering how these facts tend to adjust the odds that he and many others are being indicted, they adjust them upwards. In other words, they make them more likely. So you have a uh, grand jury that is really at pains to portray uh, itself as having been thorough and very focused on the facts. Uh, you have a grand jury that is that is cohesive. There's like some joking going around uh, during, as the six are there and obviously very friendly. So over the course of those those months together, eight months or so, they, they became uh, tight. And then even though they thought, I think, that um, Coors had given away details she shouldn't have. There's a, you know, argument about that either way. My main um, response to it is it doesn't really matter. She didn't do anything against uh, the law and all this is going to be superseded by the real grand jury. But they did the same uh, thing. They gave some, um, you know, little uh, details uh, that obviously were, was from the, the testimony, et cetera, again, all tend to be pretty bad for, um, for Trump. Hey, everyone. We're taking a quick break to ask you to take a second to like and subscribe. It's a quick thing that really helps the show. Thanks, and back to the video. On to a few specifics. Here's one that couldn't help but catch uh, your eye. They actually quoted Lindsey Graham as saying, as of that time, when uh, Trump is calling up Raffensperger, uh, that if somebody had told Trump that aliens came down and stole Trump ballots, Trump would have believed it. Um, okay, now first, so what what that's that's uh, making clear is he's lunging for anything and everything. Now you could maybe. If you, you know, say that Trump's trying, that Graham's trying to protect Trump by saying he's so unhinged that he actually believes he, he won against, you know, all the, the facts. That's for the grand jury to, um, to decide, however. And that kind of, of colorful presentation about what's going on, um, uh, is, is I, you know, something that, that I, I, I think will, you know, really draw, drives home the, um, intensity of the Trump activity during that time for the grand jury. Um, what else? They hear from 75 witnesses overall, and they um, categorize them in three groups. The first ones come in and are generally forthcoming. They specifically invoked, remember, uh, uh, the, the two workers uh, who were accused uh, by Giuliani and others of hanky-panky that they never did, and they were you know, Ruby Shea and Fre um, 
her her colleague um, Freeman. Um, they were, um, you know, very forthcoming. Then there were others who were gotten a little squirrely, and then they got to the end, and basically it's the Trump allies and just don't want to talk at all. Um, you have, they, they revealed that about 10 people or so came in and, um, took the Fifth Amendment. Uh, they talked about whether they should have called Trump and they said they didn't want to waste the time. They thought he would just take the Fifth Amendment. They were aware of that. So that, that really, I think, uh, you know, tells you their mindset about, um, Trump. Um, they, um, in, you know, in general, uh, seem to, to, um, think there were, you know, people who were, who were telling them the truth and being forthcoming and others who weren't. And they gave this big reveal about another phone call that Trump, uh, had actually made, which they, they heard. So I guess it was recorded to, I think, the head of the Georgia State Senate where he's pushing that guy is Trump to convene a new uh, legislative session and change the votes. That would be totally of a piece with what he's trying to do to Raffensperger. That would be election fraud because there's no basis for doing it. Um, very interesting details about Michael Flynn, which is that Flynn who comes in and takes the, the fifth they had to um, pause at the proceedings to do a sweep with dogs of bombs and the like because they were worried that Flynn's crazy uh, supporters might actually be trying to sabotage the grand jury. I think that is a little detail that hits home and lets you know who are who are the good guys and who are the bad guys. Um, and just you know, in general, the portrait uh, it doesn't you don't have to read too much between the lines to to know that they were, you know, really impressed with, uh, literally, the sort of um, gravity and and uh, detailed depiction of the crimes. They were very clear, by the way, to to um, say that the um, prosecutors never tried to um, push in one direction or another. Were very much just the facts. Uh, and weren't weren't sort of winking or nodding or leading them to to say one thing that the prosecutors also repeatedly emphasize you can't hold somebody's taking the Fifth Amendment against them that you know they seem to have been uh, the absolute uh, picture of prosecutorial um, propriety. So that all adds up to quite a punchline, which is what which is what the article ends with uh, actually uh, from one of the jurors who says. And it's going to be massive. It's going to be massive. So, you know, there are, of, of course, there's the step from them to Fonnie Willis and from Fonnie Willis to the new grand jury. But all, all of this certainly indicates, makes it much more likely we're looking at a, a big uh, set, you know, of, of charges and ones that are, you know, very strong very strongly um, target Trump and his circle. So right now, attention's focused on the Manhattan DA, which in a few days will, will issue its own indictment, but this will be coming shortly on the heels of it. And it's going to be, it looks like, much bigger and in some ways more serious going right at the uh, effort at the end of his presidency to completely subvert the democracy. So a lot to, uh, to, to look forward to uh, there the, and fairly soon, even though imminent has been dragging on for a while now. But it's, uh, it's uh, round the corner we, in, in one way or another. And when it, when it comes, uh, I'll definitely be there to give you the, the scoop on it. Until then, talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.